going to find your way. You're going to be okay. And you are not alone. Sorry, but this person is not available. Please leave a message after the beep. Ah, thank goodness. <clears throat> ah, forgive me for calling you at such a late, or should I call it early, hour. 3 a.m. is a time when no living creature should be awake, except for nocturnal creatures, I suppose. And as much as I prefer the post-meridian hours, even I must admit that my biological nature would prefer for me to sleep right now. As it currently stands, I fully blame you for the reason that I am awake at this hour. It appears that this express coffee is far more potent than its size suggests. Approximately 30 minutes after consuming it, my left leg began to experience uncontrollable tremors, and I found it extremely hard to concentrate on any one thing. I even had trouble paying attention during the Alpha Sigma Mu Rho fraternity business meeting, which is normally the highlight of my week. When faced with this unprecedented situation, I default to my normal reaction to such things. I deeply analyze it. In my manic mental state, I found myself playing and replaying the conversation we had during our d informal gathering. Uh, my resting heart rate was 20 beats per minute higher than normal, and it has only slowly decreased as the evening has progressed. From my repeated post-conversational analysis, I was able to isolate 13 breaches of decorum, most of them my fault which led to the current events. I will spare you the details, as I have already gone over them with my roommate, Austin, who advised me to not share them with you. He is largely much better at interpersonal communication than I am, and so I trust his judgment on these things. Even after my in-depth analysis, it failed to relieve my symptoms as my ruminations now progressed from recalling the previous conversation to uh, attempting to alter the conversation. At first, it was simple. I only attempted to fix my own breaches of decorum to have an uh, idealized conversation with you. But I found those conversations hollow and unconvincing. As I realized that I cannot simulate your, at times, unpredictable way of turning things around, I then took a more chaotic path and attempted to torpedo the conversation with wild proclamations and intentional breaches of decorum. But I found such methods only led to discomfort and a dead end. As I do not know how you 
or I, for that matter, would actually react. My mind then lambasted me with dark thoughts and worst-case scenarios. A familiar and usually effective failsafe to quiet my inner self. But even in the face of such bombardment, I still restarted the conversation each time. I then attempted to force myself to sleep, but once again, the effects of the express coffee lingered. I even tried drinking calming chamomile tea, and I took a longer than usual evening shower, but it did little to calm my mind. Though my leg had stopped shaking by this time, I normally sleep quite comfortably in my bed, generally in the fetal position, but for some reason tonight, I found myself switching positions approximately every 3.5 minutes and, and deviating to other positions as well. I even briefly laid on my stomach, a position I normally rank the lowest in both comfort and restfulness. <sighs> All because I could not get you or our conversation out of my mind. I am simultaneously physically tired and mentally overstimulated. And at this point, I'm willing to try anything deemed plausible for relief. Which is what brings us to this moment. Uh, I will admit that earlier in the evening, Austin recommended that I contact you and try to um, lay it all out there, so he says. I had dismissed this as not possible in my manic state, but when faced with the possibility that I may never sleep again. I am willing to try even this. Oh. Ah. Ah. My first yawn. Ah. I will take this as a sign that I am on the correct path. I will first admit that I initiated our acquaintanceship on false pretenses. What, I'm, what I am about to tell you is official fraternity business, and, and while it's not necessarily a secret, I... I humbly beseech you to keep this in confidence. I had told you previously that I needed to, quote, expand my horizons. My assignment was more specific than that. My fraternity tasked me with taking an uh, attractive person out on a date. I was terrified at the prospect, but Austin advised me to pr pretend like it was a two-person business meeting, and that approach seemed more tolerable to me. Ugh. Ugh. 
with the approach settled, I needed to find a, uh, willing co-attendee. This part proved far more difficult, as I have not had any, um, past success in these sort of things. It may come as a surprise to you that I have not made many friends while in college. Well, except for within the fraternity. But that would not be sufficient to satisfy the requirement of the assignment. My fraternity brothers offered plenty of suggestions, but I felt it would be irresponsible of me to engage with someone who I didn't know or have any interest in. And so we come to the crux of the matter. I... I... I believe I am infatuated with you. <laughs> I know it's a foolish thing to admit, much less feel. It, it is a betrayal of the trust you put in me when you agreed to meet with me under the pretense of platonic acquaintanceship. <clears throat> I truly intended to maintain a platonic approach to our meeting so that I could meet the fraternity's requirements without the truly impossible task of finding someone romantically interested in me. I chose to approach you because you truly are kinder than most. What I didn't count on was that I would fall for you. Uh, talking to you is like a spark of electricity. It travels throughout my body and short circuits my logic. It, it causes me to make mistakes. But it also makes me want to try new things. <sighs> I, I knew that something dangerous had developed, and I should have called it off right there, but I, I wanted to have an, another conversation with you. Uh, how pathetic is it? that I would develop feelings for someone just because they were kind to me once. <sighs> Though I do suppose it was more than once. <sighs> do you remember when... <sighs> no. Never mind. It doesn't matter. I understand that just because you were friendly towards me doesn't mean that you are romantically attracted to me. My own passions have clouded my judgment. It would be pointless to let this one-sided crush continue. Therefore, I will stay away to the best of my ability until this infatuation passes. Rest assured, I will not try to reach out to you again, and I will avoid crossing your path. Please, please don't be angry with me. I need time to allow these feelings to pass. So, 
I will minimize the evidence of my existence so that there is no conflict. Uh, it seems a messenger of mercy has visited me, for I can feel my body growing heavy, and my eyes remain easily closed. Thank you. Thank you for the conversations and the coffee. It was exhilarating. Goodbye. Hey there, softies. Thank you so much for your support and encouragement as I get more comfortable with these uh, role plays. I know that this particular part was a downer, uh, but it's not the last part. So tell me down in the comments, what would you do in this situation? Who knows? Uh, some of your ideas might influence what happens in the next part. Again, thank you so much for the support you've shown me. It's nice to give back to the community. I'll see you in the next part.